Now this week, we are going to be talking about motion in two dimensions. And in order to do that, we're also going to be talking about something called vectors. But before we begin, the very important thing to keep in mind is that the horizontal, that's motion in the x direction, and the vertical, motion in the y direction, motions in two dimensions are independent of each other. So any motion you have in the horizontal direction doesn't affect any motion that you have in the vertical direction. That may, may seem a little bit weird. It means that no matter how far I move along the east-west direction here, my position along the north-south axis doesn't change. And no matter how far I move along the north-south axis, my position along the east-west axis doesn't change. So that's essentially what we mean by independence of motion. And so right here, I have my cardinal points, north, south, east, west, and you've got an example of two-dimensional motion. I started here, somewhere where I'm defining to be the center of my coordinate system. I move five miles to the east. That's my horizontal component of motion. I move three miles to the north. That's my vertical component of motion. And then I want to connect this distance between where I started and where I ended, okay? If, if we're talking about displacement here. And to do that, I'm gonna draw this vector. So our vector has a direction, it's going up and over here, okay? And um, I always draw a little arrow tip at the end of my vector to tell me that this is the direction of my motion. Well, let's talk a little bit more about finding the components of a vector graphically, and by graphically I mean we draw it and we look at it and we can use trigonometry to help us figure out the components of this vector. So I'm gonna start right here, okay? I've got a little coordinate plane that I drew. I'm gonna start the tail of my vector here and I'm gonna draw in my vector off in some direction like this, okay? And we're again gonna call this vector the D vector. I've got my arrow on top of it, okay? This vector has some dimension or some size along the x-axis and it has some component along the y-axis. And so if I draw my dotted line along the x-axis and along the y-axis here, this makes a right angle triangle here where my vector d here is the hypotenuse of that triangle. And I can put in an angle here, angle theta, which is the angle that that vector sits with respect to this is my positive x-axis. And sometimes I put an x-hat there to represent that that's along the x-dimension. We can find the components of this vector in the x-direction and in the y-direction. So I'm going to call the component of this vector here in the x-direction, which is essentially the leg of this right angle triangle, I'm going to call that dx. And I'm going to call the vertical component or the y component of this triangle dy, okay? And so we can use trigonometry to figure out what dx and dy should be if the components of these vectors, this vector, if we know the magnitude of d and we know this angle right here. So, because, let's start with dx here, okay? dx is adjacent to my angle theta, so I could say that cosine of theta we know to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of theta will be my adjacent side, which is the dx side here, or the dx component of this vector, all over the magnitude or the size of my d vector. So if I solve this for dx, dx is equal to the magnitude of d cosine theta. So then if I want to know the, um, if I want to know the y component of this vector dy, I can use sine. Sine theta is equal to opposite, dy is the opposite side, over the magnitude of my hypotenuse here, which is the magnitude of this vector d. And then, if I solve that for the y component of my d vector, d sine theta. So when I put these little bars around my vector, and I say that that's the magnitude of d, that means that there's no sign on that number. We remove any positive signs, we remove any negative signs, it's an unsigned 
number. So that's how we can find the components of any vector graphically. And of course, your vector is not always going to be pointing off up and to the right, maybe pointing off in other directions, and in which case you'd have to think about, do I want to use cosine for my x component or do I want to use sine for my x component? It all depends on the orientation of your vector with respect to this angle theta that you might know. Now very often we're going to find that we want to add our vectors together, add many vectors together or add them and subtract them in different ways. And we can do that in two ways. We can do it graphically, which means we draw it and see what it might look like, or we can do it analytically. Analytically means that we use equations to help us solve for the sum of those vectors. So the method that we use is called the tip to tail rule. Okay, tip to tail. And let's first let's label what I mean by the tip and what I mean by the tail of these vectors. Okay, so all of these vectors have a tail. That's essentially the place where you start drawing your vector from, okay? And they have the tip. The tip is this arrow ahead here where you end your vector. And that tells you which direction your vector is heading off in, okay? Sometimes I call it also the head, okay? And the tip to tail rule means that if you're gonna add two vectors together, you wanna take one of those vectors and stick the tail onto the tip of the other one so that you can draw in the summation vector, the, the, the sum of those two vectors, which we also call the resultant vector. So let's say we wanna find the sum of these two vectors, vector D and E, and we'll call that sum F. So our F vector is gonna be equal to our D vector plus our E vector. And sometimes we call this sum of those two vectors added together. Sometimes we call this the resultant vector. You'll hear me call it that sometimes too. So what do these two vectors look like if we're adding them graphically? Here they are on their own. So it doesn't matter the order in which you want to add vectors. Uh, vector D plus E is the same thing as vector E plus D. So let's draw vector D plus E, like what I've done here, to find um, our resultant vector or the sum of those two vectors, vector F. And so if we do that, what I like to always do is start from a little coordinate system here. I'm gonna draw in my first vector, vector D, and then at the tip of vector D, I'm gonna draw another little coordinate system in there, and then I'm gonna draw vector E. And here we see that vector E goes straight up. So from the tip of vector D here, I'm gonna draw my second vector, vector E, okay? And now the sum of these two vectors together, our resultant vector, also we called it vector F here, is going to be the vector that Oh, let's, here we go. Oh, this is the one. The sum of those vectors, also called our resultant vector, is gonna be the vector that we can draw here from the tail of my very first vector all the way to the tip of my second vector. Okay, and that one right here is vector F. So this vector right here is vector F, okay? So that is how you could do it graphically. So what happens if we have two vectors and we want to subtract them instead of add them? So let's say we have this vector P, we call it vector P, pointing down in this direction like this, okay? And then we have another vector that we call Q, and this pointing off to the left like this. Instead of taking P plus Q, what might it look like if we took P minus Q? So if we were to draw this graphically, P plus Q would look like this. So I'm gonna start right here. I could draw P off in this direction. And then from the tip of that vector, I could draw in vector Q, which would go this way. Okay, that's vector Q. This is vector P. And then my resultant vector would be the vector that I can draw from the tail of my first one to the tip of my second one, okay, here. And so this would be my resultant vector. So this is P plus Q. But what if 
I wanted to do P minus Q. Um, in order to do P minus Q, <laughs> that's essentially the same thing as saying P plus negative Q, right? And so what I can do is I can start with my P vector looking like this. And at the tip here, instead of adding on Q vector, I add minus Q vector, which is the direct opposite of this vector right here. It's um, the same magnitude, but it ends up pointing instead of along the negative x-axis along the positive x-axis. So from right here, if I drew in the vector negative Q instead of positive Q, it would be the same length, but just going off along the positive x direction instead of the negative x direction. Okay, and this is minus Q. And then I can draw in my resultant vector, which would start from the tail of P vector and end at the tip of the minus Q vector. Okay, and then this would be our resultant vector in that case for P minus Q. And so you can see how uh, the resultant vector is going to be a little bit different depending on whether you're adding up your vectors or whether you're subtracting your vectors. And so you can always make a vector negative by just flipping it along the axis. Okay, so this one was pointing in the negative x direction to make it, um, to make it minus Q instead of positive Q. We can flip it and put a minus sign on the front of it, essentially, and place it along the positive x-axis. So this would be minus q as compared to this vector here, which is regular q. But now we're going to do it analytically, which means mathematically. OK, so I've swapped out my d vector and e vector for um, what I'm going to call them now a vector and b vector. And so then the sum of those two vectors is our resultant vector, which I'm going to call r. So r is equal to a plus b. And we can write any vector in the following form. Let's say vector a equals ax i hat plus a y j hat. OK, what do these little hats here <laughs> mean? These are what we call unit vectors. That tells us that this component of my vector if it's in front of the i hat unit vector, that component of my vector is in the x direction. Okay. If it's in front of the j hat unit vector, that means that that component of my vector is along the y direction. Okay. So it sometimes depends on your textbook. Sometimes they will actually, instead of using i hat and j hat, they'll use actually x hat and y hat, which is a little bit less confusing. But just remember that if you put these on here in vector notation, that means that that's the component of your vector either in the y direction or the x direction, okay? And then we can write our b vector as bx i hat plus b y and j hat, okay? And so then the sum of these two vectors, when you add or subtract vectors, you add or subtract the components in the same direction. So vector A plus vector B is still going to be a vector. And so that's going to equal to something in the i hat direction plus <laughs> something in the j hat direction. And so right here, we're going to sum the x component of A and the x component of B. Sum those together, that gives me the component of my sum in the x direction. And then you um, well, let's start with ay plus by here, okay, and add those two uh, quantities together, and then that will be the component of the sum of your vector or your resultant vector in the y direction or the, along the j hat unit axis, okay? And if you subtract them, then you just say ax minus bx i hat plus a y minus b y j hat. Okay, that's simple enough there. Now that we um, know how to deal with vector addition and vector subtraction, let's say that we want to find the magnitude or the size of this vector, our resultant vector here, after taking the sum of vector a plus vector b. That's this line that we just wrote right here. Okay, so the magnitude of this vector, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of that vector, I'm going to put the little signs, uh, the little 
<laughs> parallel bars around it to represent that's the magnitude or the size of that vector is going to equal to the square root of my ax plus bx component squared plus my ay plus my by component squared. Now over here I could also say that ax plus bx is rx, the component of my resultant vector in the x direction. And I could call ay plus by ry, the component of my resultant vector in the y direction. So you could choose to write them out like that too. Okay. And then that would give you the size or the magnitude of this vector right here. Okay. And so maybe you're wondering, where does this come from? Why are we using the Pythagorean theorem? But well, if we look back over here at our um, graphical vector addition, we see that our vector a has an x component here that we called ax, okay? And our um, vector a had a y component here that we called ay. And our vector b here doesn't have a component in the horizontal direction, but it does have a component in the vertical direction, which we call by. Okay, and so then we see that the legs of, of a right angle triangle that we can make with my resultant vector r as the hypotenuse, the legs of that triangle would be of size ax plus bx, but bx is zero here, plus ay plus by. And remember our Pythagorean theorem, which says that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, okay, where a and b are the legs of our triangle and c is the hypotenuse. So in this case, um, c is our resultant vector here, okay, I'm gonna put the magnitude sign around it, squared, has to equal, because it's the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle I can draw, has to equal one leg of my triangle, which in this case is ax, we'll call plus bx because there's no x component, that would just be zero for b, and then square that plus the other leg of my triangle, which would be ay plus by, okay, and we square that so that we've got c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, and we have to take the square root of both sides, so then we get that the magnitude of my resultant vector, the size of this, is equal to the square root of ax plus bx squared plus ay plus by squared, okay? And that's this equation that we wrote up right here. This is where it comes from by going back and thinking about our graphical interpretation of vector addition and then putting some math along with it, okay? So that will give us the magnitude, the size of this vector. What if I want the angle of this vector with respect to the positive x-axis, we'll call that angle theta, okay, this whole angle here. So we can use tangent of theta in order to figure out what this angle is. And so tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? And so then that would equal to our opposite side, which was our ay plus by over our adjacent side which would be our ax plus bx. Now to get theta by itself, we have to take the inverse tangent. So theta would equal to the inverse tangent of ay plus by over ax plus bx, okay? And when you do this, um, I'm always gonna ask you for this angle in degrees, so be sure that your calculator is in degree mode whenever, you, whenever you're working on problems like this. So let's do one example using numbers of vector addition. So I want to find the, what I'm going to call the resultant vector, which is the sum of my vector a plus vector b, okay? And so here I have vector a, 8i hat plus 4j hat, and vector b is 2i hat plus 5j hat. And so I'm going to draw in vector a first, and I see that vector a is eight units along the i hat direction, that's our x hat direction. So I'm gonna start from a little coordinate system that I drew here, and I'm gonna estimate eight units here for the x component of a, and then I'm gonna go up four units for my y component of a, okay? And then I'm gonna draw in that vector. So 
drawing my vector from where I started to where I ended after going over x and up y, that is my vector a. Okay? And then from there, this is our tip to tail method, I'm going to stick on from right here my vector b since I'm adding them. And for vector b, I have to go over two units in the x direction. So bx is equal to two units. And then I have to go up five units in the y direction. And then I'm going to draw in this vector, starting here and going to where I ended after going to the right and up. And this is my vector b, okay? And so um, then I connect, I draw my vector, which is the resultant vector, the sum of these two vector, vectors, by drawing in the vector starting down here at the tail of my very first vector and going all the way up to the tip or the head of my second vector. So this pink arrow that I've drawn here, this is my resultant vector. And so you can see how this resultant vector has a length in the x direction, or a component in the x direction here, of ax plus bx. That's equal to rx. We add ax and bx to go over. And then we see here that the y component of my resultant vector is going to be ay here plus by here. And that gives me the y component of my resultant vector, okay? So these essentially are making the legs here of a right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is my resultant vector, okay? So um, that is what it looks like graphically, and that kind of ties into what we just talked about. So let's write out what this resultant vector looks like in um, unit vector notation. And so then if we do that, our resultant vector is going to equal ax plus bx i hat plus ay plus by j hat, okay? And so then that's going to be 8 plus 2 i hat plus 4 plus 5 j hat, okay? So we can add those together. And then we get, this is 10 i hat plus 9 j hat. So this is what my resultant vector looks like in unit vector notation. We had to go over 10 and up 9 in order to create this resultant vector, the sum of those two vectors, okay? And then we want to find the magnitude, that's the size of this. If we took a ruler and measure it, that would tell us the size of this vector. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem for that. Remember, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we've got the magnitude of our resultant vector squared is equal to the square root of, I'm going to call this component here rx, this component here ry, is equal to the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. And so that's going to equal to the square root of Oh, because we've got the square here, um, we have to take the square root of both sides. So then we've got that the magnitude of the resultant vector is equal to, we've got 10 squared plus 9 squared, and then that will equal to 13.5 degrees. Or sorry, 13.5 units, not degrees, because this is just the length, okay? And then if you want to find this angle right here, angle that our vector makes with respect to the positive x-axis, you would use tangent theta. Tangent of theta is equal to our component ry over, because um, tangent would be opposite over adjacent, over our component rx. So this is equal to um, ry was 9, rx was 10. So tan theta is equal to 9 over 10, and then to get um, theta by itself, you have to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So theta would be equal to the inverse tangent of 9 over 10. And so if you're in degree units for your calculator, that would give you this angle in degrees that our resultant vector is pointing off from with respect to the positive x-axis here.